So you were in the army? I was in the army, yeah. I did 20 years in the army from okay. 1976 to 1996. So the mm. army sent me to Mayo, believe it or not. Mm. I was here to, I became training officer of the 18th Battalion in Castlebar in 1988, mm. uh, just after I got married. Uh, I had, Previous to that, I had been uh, chief instructor uh, in the army cadet school. And it was sort of a, I was five years there. And the last two years was, I was given a cadet class uh, uh, to, to train and be totally responsible for. And it was a um, it, it was a very onerous job. It was sort of a seven day a week, 12 hours a day job. And you don't get paid overtime in the army or anything like that. But the one thing that at the end of it is generally you could decide where you wanted to go a uh, posting that they'd look after you. So believe it or not, at the, at the time I was offered a job in New York, right, with the UN. But it didn't suit me. I just got, had got married and my wife had got a job in Castlebar General Hospital. So I opted to get, there was a vacancy here for a training officer for the 18th Battalion in Castlebar. And I opted for that and I was given that. And I was, I was sent here for a five year period uh, into Mayo, looking after FCA companies in Ballina, Swinford and in Westport, and also in Castlebar. Yeah. And when you were in Castlebar, were there many soldiers in the barracks? No, regular, uh, are the only soldiers were there that were servicing the FCA. And uh, at the time, there would have been about 20 full-time. Uh, but they, some of them would have been living here in Westport, in Swinford, in Ballina, looking after the, the, the FCA. The FCA was a larger organisation then, and hmm. people went away for two-week camps to Finner or to, you know, uh, uh, way. So the, the summer, kept preparing for the summer camps when people went away was, was a very big uh, part of the work involved there. It was a great, great time, a great enjoyable time. That's a very historic barrack in Castlebar, isn't it? Yes, yeah, Connacht Rangers. Yeah, there was a very, there was a big hospital there early, you know, as well, you know. Uh, it was, uh, the Connacht Rangers, I think, was the biggest uh, regiment in the British Army at one stage. And uh, unfortunately, after the mutiny in, in India, they disbanded it uh, when uh, their, a number of Irish soldiers refused to but they'd heard about some of the atrocities here in Ireland, and and uh, they they they, uh, they objected to it, and they ended they, they ended up disbanding the Connacht Rangers. And know? what time was that about? What year was that about? Oh, I can't the, it's just the nineteenth uh, or twentieth yeah, century. Yeah, uh, the twentieth century, I think, 20th early twentieth century. 20th century. Early 20th. Yeah, 20th century. Maybe it was around the time of the yeah, like the, here with it. Yeah, the like you had huge barracks, like you you had. Uh, uh, Galway, uh, you had uh, here in Castlebar, there's a big uh, uh, barracks in Boyle, uh, very big, you know, uh, very, very big. Uh, uh, well, the Castle Barrack was a very big one. Very big it? one, yeah. yeah. I said it said his own hospital, yeah, very big building. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And like not alone was there the Castlebar barracks, but people don't realise like there was a cavalry regiment where the now Garda station is, right? There was a second barracks in Castlebar, people don't realise that. Yeah. And there was a cavalry regiment in a separate barracks in Castlebar that now does not longer, doesn't exist at all. It was... Uh, Knocked down, was it? Yeah, demolished. It was knocked down. Demolished, it was knocked down. Yeah. demolished, yeah. 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 There's great history over in Castlebar, really, isn't there? There is huge. Yeah. And now they're going to preserve it and like the, the like the there's a preservation order on the buildings and mm. like people don't realise why there's traffic chaos in Castlebar. The reason there's traffic chaos in Castlebar is the dead centre of Castlebar is a very historic barracks, you know, which which on for you know, they will be there till you know, we'll see us all out and, and, and uh, uh, the, so the, that's why yeah, Castlebar hasn't got a, a sort of classic town centre that other other uh, towns have, you know. In 10 minutes now, do we need an army in Ireland? Well, if you, I think, I, I, if you asked me that a few years ago, I, I, I find it hard to come up with sort of uh, good reasons why and why not. But I think the last few years around the world, if you would open your eyes, Mm. Uh, basically, an army is an insurance policy for a government, mm. right? And you know, just have to see Trump in America. What was it, January sixth or whatever? The storming of the Capitol mm. and the whole lot. Like, I know you say, "Oh, that will never happen in Ireland," and the whole lot. But gee, the the, the government of the day, or more importantly, the president of the day, uh, requires people to be at hand to deal with emergencies. Now, it could be a huge fall of snow. It could be coronavirus or whatever, but there must be the arm of the state must have people who will go out in whatever weather or conditions or whatever and won't, you know, question uh, the the lawful orders of, of, of a government and will do their government's bidding. And that's hugely important, mm -hmm. in my opinion. You yeah. know? And who is the army answerable to? The president. The president. Very much so. 
Yeah. Not, not the government. I, I, I know. I have a commission, a, a document, a, a, you know, a parchment on my wall at home, very proudly uh, is continuous on my wall, and it's personally signed by the president. All right. So the army is answerable to the president. And, I, you know, again, there's been times in our history when that might have been during certain eras where CJH or whatever, where there was various different things came that the president should be doing this and the president should be doing that. But the army were four square behind the president and will always be behind the president. And yeah. was there a bit of discussion that time about... There, there, would, there would have been. Uh, there, there would have been at the time about, you know, we can all recall what was it, it, it was revealed in Nighthawks or whatever, uh, that programme where... Uh, uh, Brian Lennon or whatever uh, rang Orson Oakner on late at night in the presence of Charlie Hockey and all that, and like the, that's it, it was the it was it, the you know that just shows you the pressures that can come on a president. Mm. But the president knows that the army is one hundred percent behind him and will always be. So yeah. the army resisted the pressure that time. It did. It would have. Yeah. Mm. It would have. Yeah. Yeah. It would have indeed. Make you decisions. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy enjoy the army. Yeah? Oh yeah, I'd recommend mm. it to anyone. Yeah, I would. Mm. Anyone, if any, a friend or came up to me and said, would their thing, their son or daughter was to join the army? I couldn't recommend it highly. I have, I have a huge bunch of friends out of it and have for life. Uh, they're all uh, retired. The last classmate of mine was uh, Mark Mellish and he's retiring in, in a few days time. And 72 of us joined in 1976. Mm. And we have a WhatsApp group now and 59 of us are active on it. Mm. Isn't that fabulous? Oh, One good. fella died, right? So yeah. the 75 still alive. We meet every five years. Now that we're actually um, uh, retired, we probably will meet more often. <laughs> uh, but we meet every five years. I think the last one we had in Kilkenny, we cycled the, the Greenway, uh, the Waterford Greenway. And I think I, I think 57 turned up for mm. that, which mm. is phenomenal. You know, some guys fly in from abroad for it. You know, we've uh, we've a lot of guys who've been successful and, and have moved abroad and the whole lot of mm. their business interests or whatever in the world, but they would fly back for that. And it's just when you go through, we did a two year cadetship and you go through fairly tough times and we're from all strata of society all over Ireland. And uh, uh, you just you build bonds at that, that stage that you, you never lose, really, you know, never do.